The House Select Committee looking into the January 6th insurrection wants to see records of communications between the Trump White House and multiple government agencies. Chairman Benny Thompson sent letters to eight agencies. He's requesting information about intelligence and security preparations leading up to that attack. The committee is also looking into how the government responded on that day. For more on this, I want to bring in Zach Hudak. Zach, how are you? Good morning. Good morning, Christina. So the House Select Committee's request could signal it's, it's broadening the scope of this investigation, right? What exactly are they looking for, and do they know what they're hoping to find? Well, they're casting an incredibly wide net, Christina. They're going from six months before the election until uh, the point when President Donald Trump left office. It, they're asking for records from just about everyone associated with Donald Trump, associated with his campaign, associated you know, with his White House, the strongest loyalists, as well as people who were planning events at the Capitol, militant groups, uh, groups like the Proud Boys. It's an incredibly wide net. But what you can see at this point, to some extent, is that uh, Benny Thompson and the committee are working to try to outline a situation where you had the White House or related figures plotting for sort of a plan B, plan D, plan C, is how uh, Chairman Thompson put it, for if they did not win the election. In other words, that this was, to some extent, or elements of this, at least uh, the big lie that the election was stolen, were very much premeditated factors that uh, eventually culminated in January 6th. So do they think that there's going to be evidence that this was instigated from the White House? And, and what exactly, which agencies are they looking into? You know, they're not officially saying that at this stage, but they're uh, doing just about all but that. I mean, they're insinuating at this point, I think, that uh, they're looking, as I said, for, you know, plan A, B, C that happened long before the election. And it's hard to imagine who outside of the White House uh, would be involved. I mean, you have those actors like Ali Alexander, who had uh, been a big part in planning the protest. but. It, it's clear by how they're looking at it that they think that there is a chance that there is this long trail sort of leading from the White House. In terms of the committee, the, excuse me, the agencies they're uh, reaching out to, the National Archives is a big one. They have all of the White House records and they're asking them for communications between the White House and other entities and within the White House on January 6th and around that day. Additionally, they're reaching out to a ton of law enforcement agencies and um, as, as well as the DOD and DOJ asking for intelligence they had on this. Um, and I, I, the goal there is really to find where the information stopped, why some of these agencies had information about threats on January 6th and those threats didn't necessarily reach the right people in time. Right, why that concern wasn't escalated to the people who, frankly, needed to know. I mean, several of us were there that day, and it seemed, um, I think, disorganized would be a, an understatement. Um, do we have any idea how long this process is going to take? You know, if they're casting a wide net. You'd think it's going to take a long time to reel all that back in. Is there any kind of deadline? They've given a two-week deadline, and that two-week deadline for a couple of uh, the agencies, in particular uh, National Archives, is actually in addition to an earlier request that came a few months ago uh, that was not met. So will they meet that? Uh, I, I guess we'll find out. But the next step, if they don't, is that the committee would move to start issuing subpoenas, which puts those agencies in a much tougher position and puts a lot of pressure on them to hand over these documents. I'd also point out that uh, with Joe Biden in the White House, it seems as though it would be more likely that the uh, executive uh, branch would be willing to offer up these documents. Now, Zach, on a different topic, you've also covered several lawmakers who visited Afghanistan. How are they responding to the removal of U.S. troops and Afghan refugees from the country and the situation on the ground? It was uh, Representative Seth Moulton and Peter Meyer, both who are themselves uh, veterans of the Afghanistan war and who sit in the Armed Services Committee. They're saying that they essentially had no choice but to make uh, the trip because they didn't feel like the administration was being forthright enough for what was going on there. So they were essentially on a fact-finding mission. They've obviously come into a lot of scrutiny with people saying that they created more work for the soldiers and officials there trying to get this mission done. But uh, Meyer and Moulton are saying really that they came back with invaluable information, which more than anything reaffirmed that uh, 
we cannot get out of Afghanistan by the end of the month. One of the uh, stories that stuck out, Peter Meyer was talking yesterday about seeing a two-year-old who uh, was the daughter of an interpreter who had worked for us being trampled. So really harrowing scenes that uh, e even though those guys are under some uh, scrutiny for potentially creating more work for our soldiers over there, they've come back to share with us to really illustrate uh, the situation there. Zach, thank you very much. Thank and you, you can catch more of Zach's reporting now and, as always, on CBSNews.com.